The Vietnam War raged through the 1960s and 70s as the US found itself locked into a bloody conflict with a small nation very far from home. The plan was to join up with South Vietnamese forces and stamp out a communist uprising in the north of the country. The ill-equipped peasant army wasn't supposed to stand a chance against the USA, but in the end, the communists were victorious. How did they do it? It was at least partially down to some intense guerrilla warfare and the use of terrifying booby traps that made every American soldier tread with fear through the jungle. From the notorious punji sticks to the terrifying cartridge trap, here's the 20 most insane booby traps used during the Vietnam War. <sighs> Number 20, punji sticks. Among the various tactics the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong employed to instill psychological fear, one of the most effective was the use of ingeniously crafted booby traps. These traps were so elusive, they kept American soldiers constantly on edge. The punji stick was one of the most frequently used traps. Either sharpened bamboo hardened over fire, or nails driven through wooden boards were used as the dangerous tips. These sticks were then strategically placed, often in fields where US troops were expected to land from helicopters. To divert attention, the North Vietnamese would fire shots from the jungle's trees, causing the soldiers to overlook the immediate threat beneath their feet. Interestingly, wounds inflicted by these basic punji sticks were rarely fatal. Instead, the aim was to incapacitate soldiers, thus putting added pressure on those who remained in combat. To up the ante, the Viet Cong would coat the sticks with poison or their own feces, raising the risk of infection. According to a 1967 report from the US Military Surgical Division, every three weeks of combat would see 324 men hospitalized due to injuries from punji sticks, all of whom would require treatment for infection. If you don't want to end up like Crash Bandicoot trapped in a nasty spike pit, you better hit that like button now. And why not subscribe for more historical horrors? Number 19, Cartridge Trap. Cartridge traps operate on a similar principle to punji sticks, designed to be concealed in the ground. A bullet is placed inside a bamboo tube and a makeshift firing pin is created using a nail and a piece of wood. Then the trap is camouflaged to avoid detection by enemy forces. When a soldier steps on the booby trap, the pressure from their weight triggers the bullet to shoot through their foot. These traps are sometimes referred to as toe poppers, and the damage varies depending on the size of the cartridge. Smaller cartridges often result in permanent disability, while larger ones can be fatal. Making this trap is straightforward, requiring only a bamboo tube, a piece of wood, a nail, and a small arms cartridge. The bullet has to be positioned upright. When a soldier steps on the trap, their weight exerts pressure on the bullet, pushing it down into the nail and firing it. The objective of this trap is to wound an enemy soldier's foot, forcing him and possibly his whole unit to halt for medical treatment. This often provided the Viet Cong or other North Vietnamese forces an opportunity to launch an attack on the momentarily distracted troops. Number 18, the mace. The mace was a perilous trap that was not just intimidating, but also lethal upon impact. As American soldiers trekked through the jungle, they faced threats from above. The mace consisted of a large spiked ball, either made of metal or wood, suspended from trees. The spikes themselves could be made from metal, bamboo, or twigs. This deadly ball was linked to a trap wire. When an unsuspecting soldier snagged his boot on this wire, the ball would release falling from the tree and impaling the soldier's head. This usually resulted in immediate. If it didn't, removing the spikes was fatal, essentially guaranteeing the soldier's demise either way. The simplified version of the mace could be crafted from jungle materials, making it a versatile trap. Viet Cong soldiers could sharpen bamboo stakes and insert them into a mud ball. Left to dry in the sun, the mud would harden, securing the bamboo spikes. The ball could then be hung from a tree using vines or cords. One soldier could set this up independently and then wait for an unsuspecting target. The Viet Cong were experts at crafting hazardous traps from readily available jungle materials, setting up one fearsome trap after another. Number 17, Bamboo Whip.
The Viet Cong were adept at using a specific booby trap to target U.S. troops on foot patrols. These traps consisted of flexible bamboo sticks, generally ranging from 3 to 10 feet in length. A plate with barbed spikes was attached to one end. The stick was then affixed to a tree near a pathway and pulled back, functioning much like a horizontal catapult. A trip wire was then connected to the setup. When triggered, the spiked end of the pole would swing out, striking anyone in its path, often causing injuries to the legs or chest. The mechanics behind this trap are straightforward. The main component is a long, flexible stick made from bamboo or a similar type of wood. One end of this stick is anchored to a sturdy tree or other fixed object, while the other end features poisonous spikes. The stick acts like a flexible lever, pulled back by a rope, vine, or chain, which often doubles as the tripwire. The trap is simple to construct, and it can be made from materials commonly found in swamps, forests, or any area with sufficient trees and foliage for camouflage. Number 16. Snake Pits Falling into a pit of punji sticks is bad, but imagine plummeting into a pit filled with poisonous snakes. Snakes? Why did it have to be snakes? Indiana Jones once quipped, and that's probably what a soldier would be thinking if they found themselves in this trap. Like the punji sticks, the pit would be concealed, but instead of bamboo spikes, the bottom would be teeming with snakes. When a soldier fell in, the agitated, already hungry snakes would likely attack immediately. Moving was a painful ordeal, as the snakes, specifically bamboo pit vipers, would be all over the victim. Although small, bamboo pit vipers pack a potent venom. A healthy adult could succumb within minutes after a single bite. Soldiers even nicknamed them the two-step snake, as you'd likely pass out after taking two steps if bitten. And the Viet Cong, they didn't limit the use of these vipers to pits, they incorporated them into various other traps as well. The natural landscape itself was rife with traps like these, making the woods a perilous place to be. Number 15. Tiger Trap What could be more daunting than a pit of snakes? A tiger trap, perhaps? Don't worry, these traps didn't actually contain live tigers, let's be real. A tiger wouldn't patiently wait in a pit for a snack. Nonetheless, these traps were still brutally effective. Much like the spinning mace, the tiger trap targeted a soldier's upper body. When someone tripped a wire, it caused a plank embedded with metal spikes to fall on them. The impact was even more severe when the plank was weighed down with bricks or other heavy items. While these traps didn't contain real tigers, the animals did pose a legitimate threat in Vietnam. Take the night of December 22nd of 1968, for instance. A man-eating tiger stalked an American group from the 3rd Marine Recon Battalion near Quang Tri, Vietnam, stationed close to Fire Support Base Alpha, about six miles from the Laos border. The six-person team was awaiting helicopter extraction after completing their mission. Due to poor weather conditions, immediate extraction wasn't possible. So, the group set up a two-man radio watch while the rest slept. Out of nowhere, the tiger attacked. The silent predator elicited screams that woke up the camp. Marines rushed to the scene and opened fire. Amidst the barrage, it was unclear whose shot took down the tiger. After being hit, the tiger released its victim, who then slowly emerged from the bomb crater. Number 14. Grenade in a Can The Viet Cong employed a simple yet effective trap, known as the Grenade in a Can during the Vietnam War. An activated hand grenade was placed inside a container, with a string wound around it. If you yank the grenade out, it would arm and explode, since its pins were already removed and the friction between the handle and the can would set it off. This mechanism was often connected to a trip wire or a door that opened inward. This wasn't exclusive to the Viet Cong. American troops would sometimes repurpose grenades in similar makeshift cans. The concepts even found its way into movies. In the 1997 movie, Tomorrow Never Dies, James Bond hides a grenade in a glass jar and then detonates it with a smaller explosive. The origin of this type of trap can be traced back to jam tins, makeshift bombs used by British and Commonwealth troops in World War I, notably by the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. Due to a lack of adequate equipment for trench warfare, New Zealand and Australia resorted to crafting jam tin grenades. These devices were often rigged as booby traps, connected to a pressure trigger, and then placed under a body or another heavy object until disturbed. Number 13. Pressure Release Traps 
The Viet Cong were quick learners when it came to booby trapping not just military equipment, but also items like flags that had symbolic importance. Both the NVA and the Viet Cong valued their flags and knew that US troops often took them down as war trophies. So when they had to abandon a location, they'd sometimes plant an explosive underneath the flag. The idea was that when US troops tried to lower it, the bomb would detonate. The Viet Cong were also known for using secondary booby traps. In the heat of rescuing injured comrades, a delayed second charge could go off. They even used traps that released gas. In the 1986 film Platoon, a soldier picks up an ammo case full of maps in a hastily abandoned Viet Cong base. When the case was opened, an electrical charge was released, triggering an internal explosion that killed two men. Both the VC and NVA became adept at hiding explosives in objects that seemed either strategically important, like the maps in Platoon, or sentimentally appealing to American soldiers, like the flags. Sometimes these traps would be activated when flags were touched or taken down, whether they were flying or just left on the ground. Number 12. Hornet Trap Hornet traps operate in a similar manner to snake pit traps, though they're generally less lethal. On patrol paths, hornets or beehives would be placed, often disguised with a piece of paper that looked like a tripwire. When triggered, the swarm would descend upon the unlucky soldiers. Sometimes these hornet traps were used in conjunction with punji traps. Spooked by the hornet attack, troops might dart off the path and right into other awaiting traps. The Asian giant hornet is notably the world's largest hornet. A female worker can grow to up to nearly four centimeters, or about an inch and a half. Its sizable mandibles enable it to decapitate its prey. While its venom isn't as potent as that as other species, it can inject a larger volume of venom with each sting. Even protective clothing, like that worn by soldiers, might not be enough to stop a stinger this long. Asian giant hornets are protective of their young, and they can be particularly menacing because they attack in groups. They also rally others in the nest to participate in the attack. Given their capacity to deliver multiple venomous stings, they can pose risks, especially to children and those with existing health issues. Number 11. Trap Bridge Often, a trap bridge was constructed over a trench filled with water or mud and lined with sharply cut bamboo sticks. These sticks were trimmed short enough to stay submerged, making them harder to spot. Sometimes the water level in the trench was intentionally kept high to conceal the spikes. If that wasn't an option, mud would be used to cover the sticks. A section in the middle of the bridge was weakened, so it would give way when someone walked over it. Anyone standing on the bridge would plummet onto the spikes below when the bridge collapsed. U.S. forces did their best to identify and neutralize these traps, but they were strategically used to hinder their movement. The bridge itself often had a hole cut in its center, cleverly hidden with mud and other natural materials. Beneath this hole, barbed spikes or sharpened bamboo sticks were positioned, further obscured by the water, mud, or vegetation below. If someone stepped onto the weakened part of the bridge, it would collapse, causing the individual to fall onto the spikes below. This design could also be adapted to create a spike pit trap, with the bridge being reinforced for regular use. When enemy forces approached, the reinforcements would be removed to activate the trap. Number 10. The Bow Trap The bow trap resembled a DIY crossbow and was one of the hazardous traps crafted from jungle materials. While not as efficient as other traps and time-consuming to make, it was mainly used early in the war. But make no mistake, if an American unit wasn't vigilant, this trap could cause some real havoc. To construct it, you'd use a straightened tree and some rope for the bow whittle a stick into a sharp point, and mount the whole setup on a stand. The bowstring would be pulled back and connected to a tripwire, and foliage would be used for camouflaging the device. Because it was made from natural materials, it blended in seamlessly. If an American soldier triggered the wire, the arrow would launch, striking them. The impact was intensely painful, and multiple traps in the same area could be lethal. Plus, the Viet Cong often took it a step further by applying poison, like pit viper venom, to the arrow tips. These bow traps were typically aimed to hit the midsection, optimizing the chances of hitting the target and delivering the poison effectively. Different types of traps had varying degrees of success for the Viet Cong, but each had its own unique advantages. Number 9. Bear Trap the bear trap is another example of a side-closing device. It's essentially a small setup consisting of two spiked wooden boards connected at one end designed to flip up. 
These boards were typically concealed in a small hole. When someone or something stepped on it, the spikes would snap shut above the foot. This kind of trap was traditionally used by locals for bear hunting. Historical European cave paintings reveal that trapping pits for catching bears have been around since the Stone Age. If you take a trip to northern Scandinavia, you can still find remnants of these pits used for trapping not just bears, but also reindeer, wolves, and elk. These pits could be quite large, up to 13 by 23 feet and several feet deep, and were camouflaged with twigs and leaves. The pits were designed so that once an animal fell in, the steep sides, often fortified with planks or stones, made escaping impossible. Depending on the trap, either pointed sticks at the bottom would the animal, or hunters stationed nearby would do the job. Some of these pits even included a small rope to allow smaller creatures like mice and amphibians a way out. Number 8. Flag Bombs The Viet Cong had a special kind of trap that wasn't about useful items, but centered on flags. Whenever the U.S. troops captured a base or an outpost, they'd often lower the Viet Cong flag that was flying, either to replace it with an American flag or to keep it as a memento. The Viet Cong caught on to this habit and started planting explosives under their flags. Here's how it worked. When Viet Cong realized they couldn't hold a base any longer, they'd hastily pack up and go. But before leaving, some were assigned to set traps throughout the base hiding grenades and pit vipers in supply stores, sometimes even rigging whole ammo dumps to blow. The last order of business before leaving was to plant a flag bomb. A Viet Cong soldier would bury an explosive at the base of the flagpole and then connect an almost invisible wire to the flagpole's pulley system. Then they'd blend into the woods and move on to the next objective. Eventually, US troops would enter the abandoned base and start scavenging someone would inevitably take down the enemy flag to signify control over the base. As that person pulled the cord to lower the flag, the buried explosive would detonate right under them. This trick was also adapted for use in more remote settings, making it perilous to walk down paths or track Viet Cong forces. You had to be on high alert with every step, as it could be your last. Flags held great significance for both the NVA and the Viet Cong, and they knew US soldiers liked to collect them. So when they had to abandon a position, they'd often rig their flags to explode when lowered by US troops. Number 7. The Toe Popper Also known as the Toe Popper, the M14 anti-personnel mine was a compact yet highly damaging weapon used against the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong. The mine was a small, olive drab disc about 2.2 inches wide and 1.5 inches tall, weighing 3.5 pounds. It contained one ounce of tetral explosive and was mostly made of plastic. To trigger it, you needed to apply between 20 and 35 pounds of pressure. Installing this mine was quick work. It could be buried in a tiny hole, hidden under a leaf, or even just left in plain sight. The latter tactic was frequently employed by special forces to secure an area overnight. Setting it up involved unscrewing a base plug and inserting a detonator. A specialized wrench would then adjust the pressure plate from safe to armed. The final touch was removing the safety clip, and now the mine was active. If an unlucky NVA or VC soldier stepped on it, they'd usually lose half or all of their foot. The mine was not generally lethal, but it would leave a person permanently disabled. Special forces often planted these mines along their escape routes, and it wasn't uncommon to hear an explosion in the distance, which might not only physically hinder pursuers, but it also had a demoralizing effect. Interestingly, the use of toe poppers declined post-war, but the U.S. decided to keep a stockpile of over 1.5 million units, mainly for potential use on the Korean Peninsula. Number 6. Mudball Mine The core components of mudball mines were M26 and M33 hand grenades encased in sun-baked mud or clay. The Viet Cong would remove the grenade's safety pin, allowing the hardened mud or clay to keep the spoon in place and prevent accidental detonation. When someone stepped on the mine, the mud casing would break, causing the spoon to move and triggered the explosion. These mines were especially tricky to spot, even for seasoned soldiers, because they blended in so well with the environment. The M26 grenade, a fragmentation device, was introduced by the US military around 1952, and it saw action in the Korean War. Nicknamed the Lemon Grenade for its shape, it has counterparts like the Russian F-1 grenade and the American MK-2, commonly known as the Pineapple Grenade, both of which also sport fruit-inspired names. Number 5. The Bouncing Betty 
In late October of 1968, Corporal Jeffrey Junkins and his close friend Sergeant Gary Matson were installing M16 landmines near their Mai Lok base camp in Vietnam. These mines were nicknamed Bouncing Betties because they'd leap up about three feet and then detonate, showering shrapnel directly at head and chest level. Out of nowhere, Junkins found himself catapulted 20 feet and knocked unconscious. When he came to, he realized that a pre-existing bouncing Betty had been triggered by Matson. He also found that remnants of Matson were scattered on and even embedded in him. To make matters worse, he discovered he was lying atop another armed bouncing Betty, set to explode the moment he moved. As soon as the other Green Berets heard the explosion, they urgently advised Junkins to stay put. They faced hours of challenges trying to safely reach him and disarm the mine that he was lying on. They successfully managed to save him, but what a tense moment it must have been. Number 4. Helicopter Trap Some reports claim that during the Vietnam War, prisoners held by the Viet Cong were thrown out while flying in helicopters. If this were true, it would be classified as a war crime. Here's generally how it would go down. If two or three VC or NVA captives were in custody, intelligence would first be gathered from the most valuable one. The prisoners wouldn't be told in advance they'd be taking a helicopter ride. Once they reached an altitude of about 800 feet over a secure zone, an ARVN interrogator would ask the lowest ranking captive for information. Usually the prisoner would keep quiet, fearing repercussions from his fellow captives. He'd then be thrown out without any remorse. The interrogator would then turn to the second man. More often than not, witnessing the first prisoner getting thrown out was enough to make the second man spill the beans. Once he revealed what he knew, the highest ranking prisoner, whether an enlisted man or officer, would usually also talk. If the second man was also thrown out and didn't talk, the last prisoner wouldn't be thrown, regardless of whether he cooperated. Specialists skilled in breaking down stubborn individuals would then employ their special interrogation techniques. These would usually, but not always, break the remaining prisoner. Number 3. Spike Trap This is a pretty nasty looking trap that reminds me of Tomb Raider or Super Mario Brothers. As you plunge into the water, spikes jab at you. The rollers continue to turn and as they do, the angle of the spike changes. This means they're less likely to simply puncture and release you. Instead, they'd scrape against your flesh as you move past them, while another set of spikes lines up to do the same. The roller comes to a stop once you're fully submerged and out of the spike's reach. You're underwater and likely still conscious, but if you try to escape, you'll have to go through the roller spikes again. You're disoriented. Everything has happened so fast. Faced with antagonizing pain in a life or death situation, what's your next move? Are you going to try and get out? More often than not, Viet Cong traps were coated in decaying animal or human waste to induce sickness. Just coming into contact with one would be horrendous. Number 2. The Arrow Trap This was probably the most ingenious non-explosive booby trap. It contained a long wooden board with a 3-foot bamboo tube attached. Inside the tube, a rubber band powered an arrow, which was held in place by a catch at the board's bottom. This catch was connected to a trip wire. The traps were strategically positioned, so if someone tripped the wire, the rubber band would release, propelling an arrow at the intruder. But even for the Viet Cong, navigating the dense jungle, which was supposed to be familiar terrain, could be tricky. So, how would a Viet Cong soldier return after days or weeks, locate their own traps set for American soldiers? The VC thought of that. They devised a system to covertly mark their traps, ensuring their own people wouldn't fall victim to them. Be it the mace, grenade in a can, or a basic snake pit, they had a method to tip off fellow VC about the trap's locations. To counter these tactics, the Marine Corps established the Demolitions and Mine Warfare School. Here, soldiers were taught how to recognize and avoid captured VC traps, and if possible, how to disarm them. The Viet Cong, for their part, would place traps where they suspected American forces would pass, often setting a secondary trap in case the first one was detected. The Viet Cong would also monitor the effectiveness of their traps by revisiting sites to count how many had been triggered. They'd adapt their methods based on what worked best, changing trap types if they felt the Americans had figured them out. Navigating these booby traps was a constant challenge for American soldiers and Marines on search and destroy missions. 
While the Viet Cong were experts at camouflaging their traps in the jungle, it's interesting to know that US troops were actively working to neutralize these hazardous devices. Number 1. The Door Trap Creating a door trap was straightforward, but this trap was extremely lethal. A sturdy stick covered with spikes would be suspended over a doorway, secured by a trap wire. When a soldier walked through, pulling the wire, the spike stick would swing down, striking them in the chest. The sharp spikes on the door trap could penetrate a soldier with enough force to be lethal. While the Viet Cong weren't fans of the trap's one-time use and single victim limitation, it did make US soldiers more cautious about entering buildings. These swinging traps were often miniaturized to fit inside houses, earning them the name door traps. A soldier would trigger the trap wire simply by opening the door, causing either spiked bamboo sticks or smaller logs to fall and stab them. Booby traps are indiscriminate weapons. They can harm civilians and non-combatants, much like anti-personnel mines. International protocols prohibit their use against civilians and also ban their placement on the wounded or deceased, as well as on medical supplies, food, and beverages. The term booby trap has roots in the word bobo, which in Spanish signifies a fool or a simpleton. The English word first appeared around 1590 and was initially used to describe practical jokes. However, its meaning shifted to something far graver during World War I. The term is also linked to the seabird known as the booby, a creature well adapted to life in the water but clumsy on land, making it an easy catch. So, what do you think of these horrifying traps? Do you think it's okay to use them in war or not? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.